Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Obviously, I'm in witness protection mode here. You can also find me and clearer videos in the sports section on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's be contrarians for a moment. We're looking for unconventional information that might run counter to public opinion because we want to get an edge on the casino. And let's look at the Arizona Cardinal Denver Bronco game. Now when you think of the Broncos, you think of a great offense. Right? Probably the best known Bronco is quarterback Peyton Manning. He's explosive. Here, he's at home. Right? It's early in the season. He's not tired. He's 100% healthy as far as we know. Right? So you would think that this game is going to have a bunch of points scored. Not so fast. The over-under here is 47 and a half points. I'm leaning under the 47 and a half. First of all, 47 is a lot of points. Second, right, understand that Carson Palmer is going for a second opinion on his shoulder. He might not be the starting quarterback for the Arizona Cardinals. You have Drew Stanton out there against a defense that's top notch. Right? I'm guessing Drew Stanton's going to hand off the ball a lot to Ellington. I'm expecting Arizona to play smash mouth conservative football, even with Larry Fitzgerald. Right? Let me also make the case for one of the more underrated units in football. If you want a great secondary, look no further than the Arizona Cardinals. Folks, the Cardinals have an elite defense. It's a playoff caliber defense. If you're a long-term better on the Denver Broncos, this really is one of the games to look at to see how they do against an elite defense. Right? You've seen them against the Seahawks. Right? They didn't look that good for three quarters. They didn't look that good, let's be blunt here, for three and a half quarters. Right? Now they're going up against another rough and tumble NFC West defense. I think the air is going to be taken out of the football. I think Peyton Manning is going to discover that Patrick Peterson knows what he's doing. Right? Understand too, Peterson is different than Richard Sherman. Richard Sherman stays on one side of the field. Peterson will stick whoever is the hot hand wherever he is. Right? I think Arizona is one of the more underreported stories. I think Bruce Arians, Arizona's coach, is one of the better coaches. I'm not expecting a lot of points to be scored in this Denver Arizona game. Right? Let's shift gears. New England. I know they look terrible. Wow, did they suck against the Kansas City Chiefs. Right? Let me make a few points on that. First, Alex Smith. He got run out of Northern California. You know, all Alex Smith does is win games. Understand, since he left the 49ers, he actually got the Chiefs in the playoffs last year, and they were up big. They were up big against Indy. Then his defense let him down. Right? There's some metric involving Alex Smith that doesn't get recorded in a quarterback rating. That's the first point. Right? The next point I want to make, though, is I understand everyone saying, wow. New England has a subpar offense, right? Rob Gronkowski is no longer Rob Gronkowski. Tom Brady is in his late 30s, right? It's over for this team. 
Well, let me ask you, what if I told you that the Patriots actually have an above average defense? Right? The season didn't start with the last game. The season started opening day. What I want to encourage everyone to do is to look at what New England has done defensively on the year. Now, if I told you that the defense is above average, that they're in a weak division where the rivals are teams like Buffalo with the new quarterback, right? Kyle Orton is new. They just made a quarterback change. You know they're having problems because they're making changes at key positions, right? Miami, a team where Ryan Tannehill was in danger of losing his quarterback job. And of course the Jets where Geno Smith has too many skeptics to mention, right? If you have an above average defense in a below average division and your offense has Tom Brady, Shane Vereen, and Steven Ridley, I think you're going to be okay, right? Let's not get too carried away by a game on the road that just happened to be nationally televised. Right? I know New England doesn't look great right here, but let's just say rumors of their death have been greatly exaggerated. Right? Let me uh, talk about some other teams, too. I mentioned Buffalo. Now, Buffalo intrigues me quite a bit because Buffalo actually has an above average defense. In fact, when you look closer, you're going to see that Buffalo has a lot of things going for them. But E.J. Manuel at quarterback was a problem. The question really is whether Kyle Orton is the solution. Right? If he is the solution, given that Buffalo also has an above average special teams unit, if Kyle Orton can add some passing to Buffalo's rushing attack. Buffalo might be a team in play, don't you think? Right? So I think I think Buffalo is a team that we need to keep an eye on. Understand, I'm here talking about teams that are a little bit off radar that people really aren't considering that highly. Let me talk about a disaster that happened to me last week. I thought the Pittsburgh Steelers were going to handle Lovey Smith's Tampa Bay Buccaneers and at, least, and at least take care of us Moneyline betters on that game. The play was so obvious that some of you actually replied in the comments, hey Dwyer, give us a challenging pick. This pick is too obvious. The pick looked obvious for three and a half quarters. And then the Pittsburgh Steelers self-emulated toward the end of that game. Now I'm fully expecting the Steelers to bounce back this week. Right? I'll concede the Steelers let me down big time last week. If they lose this game on the road at Jacksonville, then you'll know there are big troubles in Pittsburgh. Right? Pittsburgh's defense has been shaky. It's a bit shocking because I know Dick LeBeau is one of the most prominent defensive coordinators in the league. But in my opinion, Pittsburgh's offense, LeGarrette Blunt, Ben Roethlisberger, the offense has actually been clicking. The offense has had some big games. Curiously, this is one of the first times in recent memory that I've looked at a Pittsburgh team and I've questioned the defense. It's put up or shut up time for the Pittsburgh Steelers. You have a rookie quarterback as your opponent. By the way, Vegas is so chagrined by the Steelers story that the Steelers aren't even favored by a touchdown over Jacksonville. The Steelers are only favored by six points. Think about that. I'm so chagrined. I'm not even recommending the Steelers. 
to cover the point spread. Rather, I have the Steelers here as my money line play of the week at a minus 260. Right? A big enough return where, okay, I'll take it, a team with its back up against the ropes in a division with some tough teams. Many people are saying Cincinnati has the inside track for the AFC Championship. Certainly many people consider the Bengals to be for real. We'll find out more about them this week. The Steelers can't let the Bengals or the Ravens get too far in front of them. Steelers have to show up here, right? If they don't, heads are going to roll, right? People are going to get upset. The Steelers will have laid multiple eggs in a row. So, yes, I do like the Steelers on a money line at minus 260 over the Jacksonville Jaguars. As bad as the Steeler defense has been this year, and it's been below average, I still think the complexity of that defense is going to befuddle Blake Bortles. Right? Let's be clear here, too. Blake Bortles looks like a great athlete, but he doesn't look like he has the understanding of the game at this stage in his career that fellow rookie Teddy Bridgewater does. Right? So at this point, I think Blake Bortles is just another rookie quarterback. I'm expecting the Pittsburgh Steelers to win on the money line at minus 260. Right? You would think that play is uncontroversial. Last week's play turned out to be very controversial. Finally, let me say this. I know the San Francisco 49ers managed to beat the Philadelphia Eagles. Philly was inside the 10-yard line instead of kicking a field goal that would have covered all Philly bets on the point spread. Philly decided to go for the touchdown. Depending on the line you got, when you got it, you either won or lost on the play. But here's what you need to know. Colin Kaepernick, again, had a week that didn't have a lot of passing yards in it. Right? The 49ers' strength last week was their rushing attack and their run defense. The team still, in my opinion, has holes. I view their game this week against the Kansas City Chiefs, the same Chiefs who just took out the Patriots, to be a tough game. When you look at their schedule, they have a game on the road against Denver. They have two games left against Seattle. They have a game against the very disappointing New Orleans Saints, who at times can be a juggernaut. And of course you have rumors now, they're getting louder every week, that there's dissension in the 49er locker room, right? As Deion Sanders put it, players want the coach out. By the way, his word is players, not player. He actually went to Twitter and said it wasn't Michael Crabtree who was his source. Understand too, Trent Dilfer, who's from the Bay Area, right, who's on ESPN, he himself questioned the spirit in the 49er locker room, right? You add all of those things together with the fact that they're in one of the toughest divisions in football. Cardinals, reigning Super Bowl champion Seattle Seahawks. And I think the 49ers right now should make people uncomfortable. Right? I continue to believe the Niners are overrated. We'll see what happens. Anyway, let me hear from you. I have a premium pick posted up at the Wire Sports Betting. I hope you give that a look. If you feel that there's a game that gives our subscribers here online an edge on the casino, if there's a line or if there's a total that we should know about, I want you to put it in the comment section to this video. Let me just add a couple more things. I fully expect 
the woeful New Orleans Saints to win big this weekend. I'm not sure if they cover a double-digit line, but let's just say, like the New England Patriots, I consider the Saints to be underrated at this point. I understand that the Saints have gotten off to a terrible start. I understand that their defense has looked terrible. Rex Ryan's brother Rob hasn't gotten it done, at least not as of yet. Right, But just understand that the Saints continue to have one of the best home field advantages in the National Football League. You're seeing the Saints emulate on the road. Right? Let's see what they do at home. I think you have to consider the Saints the way you consider the Atlanta Falcons. As two different teams. The team that's out in the road and the team that plays indoors at home. Let me point out something else too for hardcore gamblers. On Saturday, the weather report says that it's supposed to rain in New Jersey. Pay close attention to that situation. If that rain extends into Sunday morning, then the Giants will be a stronger play than they are right now. If that rain is just a drizzle and not a hardcore rain, then the four in the Giant game becomes problematical, right? Because there have been times this year, even though the Giant defense is above average, there have been times this year where Dominique rogers Cromarty doesn't seem to be in sync with Andrew Roll and the other guys in that Giant secondary. Notably, their game against the Detroit Lions where Calvin Johnson curiously didn't seem to be covered on a couple of plays. Right? If it's a hard rain in New Jersey on Saturday, then I like the Giants on Sunday against the Atlanta Falcons. But I'm not placing a bet on that game yet. I want to see how intense the storm is. If it's iffy, if it's questionable, if it doesn't look like the rain has affected field conditions, then I'm going to stay on the sidelines on that game. That's how I see it. Let me know how you see it. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at DwyerSportsBetting.com and GamblersAdvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.